God bless you. And I'm speaking today to the body of Christ, to North Carolina Third Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, to our friends on Facebook Live, on uh, all out in social media. Uh, Listen, I'm here to invite you to an event that's about to take place that's going to make a tremendous difference. Now, one of the things that I I want to do that I'm concerned about, my friends, is making a lasting impact impact on those who hear me preach, on those who attend our church, on those who attend our uh, workers meetings, our convocations, uh, anything that's held at the upper room. You know, one of the things I, I want us to have a good service. I want us to have a shouting good time. I want us to have a hand clapping, foot stomping church of God in Christ uh, uh, time. But also we want to impart something spiritual, some gift spiritual, something that will affect your spirit, your heart, and your mind. And I believe, and I'm talking to leaders today, leaders, pastors, leaders of churches, leaders of families, leaders of business. I'm talking to people who are pastors, superintendents, uh, my administrative staff. We have gotten together and we are excited about what God is about to do. April the 19th through the 21st. Please write this down. April the 19th through the 21st, we are having our seventh annual Ministers and Workers Conference of the North Carolina Third Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ. I'm blessed to be the prelate of this jurisdiction, and I thank God for the supervisor who works with me, uh, Supervisor Beverly DeJanay, and we are excited about what God is going to give us to do on the 19th through the 21st of April. Now listen, here's one of the things that I'm excited about and, and I want you to hear this and I want you to make ready and I won't go on too long because you know Brother Wooden can be long winded but on uh, the, the 19th that morning that morning I want you to meet me here at uh, uh, 930 in the morning we are going to have prayer we're going to meet and the Lord is going to bless us real good and we're going to have what's called a, uh, a leadership forum. And I want to discuss uh, what I call four must haves that each leader should possess. There are some things that need to uh, be present and operating in the life of every leader in the church. I will be joined by my chief of staff, Superintendent Tommy Eugene Quick, my first assistant, Superintendent Christopher Stone, my second assistant, Superintendent uh, Ronald Gates, our supervisor, Mother Beverly DeJanay, and my entire administrative staff. That it will be Q&A. We will have questions, time for questions and comments. We're going to meet and the Lord is going to bless us real good. And I want to give you, I want to give you uh, these four must haves that I think will impact any leader. And uh, I t- I'll tell you, uh, I'll I- I tell you what I'll do. I'll tease you with just one of them. And we want you to come and and hear and get all four. But one of the must-haves is that a leader must first and foremost love the Lord. Must first and foremost love the Lord. And I look forward to addressing the leaders of our jurisdiction who are going to meet me in prayer on the 19th that morning. So we're going to be arriving on the 18th. Some may be arriving on the 17th uh, because you don't want to miss any of it. We start that morning and I'm excited about teaching our men of God along with these other leaders how to love God. Do you not know there's a difference between loving God and loving your pastor, 
loving God and loving your local church, loving God and loving your denomination. I hear people say, and they should say it because I do. I love the church of God in Christ. I do, but I don't confuse my love for this denomination with my love for God. I love being married to Pamela, but I don't confuse that love with my love for God. And see, when you love the Lord, your love for Jesus Christ will affect everything else that you do in this life. Listen, God is going to bless us real good. I, I, I'm so excited about these four must haves, but we're going to do two uh, uh, on, on Tuesday, the 19th, and we will do two more on the 21st. And we're excited. My uh, a Wednesday night guest will be Bishop Michael Payton. What a mighty man of God he is. He is um, uh, the jurisdictional prelate of Metro Georgia Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Bishop Payton is a man of God. Bishop Payton is a dear personal friend. I've had the opportunity to go down and preach for Bishop Payton. Bishop Payton loves Jesus and he's a highly anointed man of God. And he is going to minister right here on the 19th, the opening night of our ministers and workers meeting. And I'm so excited about him. And you know, Thursdays is Women's Day and it's Women's Day all day long. And during the day session, our wonderful supervisor, Supervisor Beverly DeJanae, will be the guest speaker. And listen, the theme is strengthening the whole woman. What a powerful presentation that's going to be. And you don't want to miss any of it. Also, what will be taking place on Thursday is also our men's Acts 6-3 men's session, which will take place from 10 a.m. to noon under the leadership of Elder Anthony Maurice Wilson, who is doing a tremendous job leading our jurisdictional men's ministry. He also serves a part of the national MPM, Men Perfecting Men, men's ministry. And we're excited about what will take place. And that's from 10 to 12 Men be in place during that time. Also on uh, uh, Thursday, which is Women's Day, uh, at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall, our Pastors and Elders Council, led by Superintendent William H. Cooper the II, who is uh, the president of our pastors. He's the chairman of our Pastors and Elders Council. So that that's going to be a lot going on. We're, we're, we're excited about what will take place. Mother's theme will be strengthening the whole woman. Elder Wilson's theme is dealing with strength through submission. So men be in place uh, and you're going to be blessed by this. And on Thursday night, our Thursday night speaker will be Emeritus Supervisor, Ohio North First Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. What a woman of God she is, Mother Thelma Giles Butts. She mentored our supervisor, Mother Beverly DeJanae, they are the best of friends. And Mother Butts is a highly anointed woman of God with a word uh, from the Lord uh, that will bless us in these, in times like these. All oh, the days that we're living in, we need to hear from the voice of experience. We need to hear from someone who has spent time before God. And Mother Butts is that woman and she's going to bless us real good. And we will be back in the, the sessions on uh, a Friday morning. Yes, as you see, we have a lineup for you. I'm excited about what's going to take place and we're going to be dealing with the remaining two of the must-haves that God has given me to share with the leaders and members of North Carolina 3rd and with you, my friends. We want you to tune in. We want you to stream in because we are going to have an amazing time. I didn't mention this for Wednesday, but we have a speaker uh, who is going to bless us with a leadership presentation 
Elder Anthony Robinson is going to do a tremendous leadership presentation during the morning on uh, on Wednesday morning, April the 19th, and on Friday morning, uh, April the 21st, we call him the preacher, the Elder John Burnside, Emmanuel Tabernacle Ministries, Church of God in Christ, South Carolina District, will be ministering the word of the Lord, and we will go into our bishops, uh, uh, our leadership forum, and God is going to bless us real good. And yours truly will be ministering the word of the Lord on Friday night, the official day, the 21st of April, uh, in our uh, workers, ministers and workers meeting. And as you can see, we're holding it by the grace of God to, to three days. And one of the reasons why we have a three days ministers and workers meeting and a three day um, um, convocation is that one of the things that we value here at uh, uh, North Carolina Third is pastor's time. The main thing that a pastor wants is time to pastor his church. And if if we can find a way to give them as much time as they possibly can, as we possibly can to minister and pastor that church and carry on the vision that God has given them. Uh, I believe those pastors in return will appreciate the effort of the prelate to give them time and that they will come and invest in the meeting. Remember, as I've said before, if you miss one day, you've missed a third of the meeting. If you miss two days, you've missed two thirds of the meeting. If you miss three days, you've missed the whole meeting. So I want you to be here. Come meet me the 19th of April that morning. Come ready to learn. Come ready to uh, get things that will impact your church, your district, your family, your marriage, the children that will be impactful on our lives until Jesus come. So uh, NC third and all who care about this jurisdiction, this is a little layout of our ministers and workers meeting. And I look forward to seeing you here at the headquarters of North Carolina Third Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, 3300 Idlewood Village Drive, here in the city of Raleigh, North Carolina, a place that I declared years ago to be God's country. I'll see you here. <laughs>